Hey guys, this video is taking a little bit longer to make because it's a different video from what I normally do. As much as I love learning about Fallout lore, I always love creating my own factions, quests, and characters as well. As such, I'm going to try and do something new and make a video of a faction that I've been creating. This is one major faction of three that I envisioned for a complete game and would like to go in some depth and explain them. This game, the plot and factions are not location specific and as such could be molded to fit a variety of locations for a new game. The inception, history, and overall description of the faction known as the Cindersis or just the Cinder for short is one of three main factions that I envision for this game. Prior to the Enclave's virtual destruction from Fallout 2 in the west coast, a detachment of around 24 troops was sent to investigate whether a secret Defense Intelligence Agency or DIA facility survived the war. If you remember, the DIA is like the Fallout equivalent of the CIA, and one of their bases can be explored as part of the railroad quests in Fallout 4. Among this group is an individual named Delis Sazik, who grew up in the Enclave and was a stalwart Enclave supporter. He had, however, been passed over many times for leadership positions due to nepotism and was becoming increasingly jealous and disillusioned with the faction, but keeps much of that to himself. He is, however, selected to be part of this detachment and they set off to find the facility and afterwards relay their success. Before they are able to locate the facility, they hear rumors that the Enclave base has been destroyed in California. They continue onward, unsure of the legitimacy of the rumors. They end up finding the facility and enough time has passed that they have been able to receive enough information to believe that these rumors of the Enclave's destruction are true. There is disagreement within the group, with 10 of those that want to go back, either to help or rejoin Enclave forces back on the west coast, and 14 of those that want to stay at the facility. The schism then turns violent and Delis, who opted to stay, and the others who wish to stay end up killing the leader and eight of the others, losing four of their own. One of those wishing to return is able to escape alive. Delis solidifies his position as leader and investigates the facility with the goals of using whatever information and weapons they find to establish his vision of the Enclave. The facility was primarily used for a DIA black project called the Nostradamus Program with the sixth and latest iteration of the program being Nostradamus 6 or just N6 for short. The facility was initially researching the existence of psychic abilities for data collection and steadily increased in scope and funding to explore the psychic powers, amplifying psychic powers, and harnessing or replicating psychic powers. The project resulted in the construction of a special cell that activated and amplified psychic powers within the individuals as well as various weapons and tools that had mind-altering effects. It's here that maybe a connection could be established between the Mesmatron and Fallout 3 and some of the work that is being done in this facility. Delis and the rest of the group stay at the facility and pour over the terminals and files. The more Delis learns of the projects that went on there, the more he becomes consumed with the powers this facility may endow him with. Finally, he promises his followers that they were chosen for a greater purpose and convinces them to enter the cell with him in order to undergo their transformation. One person outside initiates the device in the control room, and four people within the cell end up dying, while a few, including Dallas, survive. The survivors do, however, fall unconscious and are very sick for a long period of time. They are taken care of by the one who did not enter the cell and was in the control room, whose name is Auden. As Auden begins to despair due to the dwindling supplies and no apparent progress of his friend's condition, Delis regains consciousness and realizes he has successfully gained intense powers of persuasion, mental coercion, along with a limited seer ability and telekinesis. All those that were unconscious awake in time and find that they have varying degrees of psychic abilities, primarily the ability to persuade or in some cases outright control people's minds. They create a secretive cult-like group with Delis as their leader and begin to persuade people to join. They move into a reinforced pre-war nuclear research plant that is not too far away in an attempt to keep the DIA cell a secret. The secret cell is essentially considered sacred as Delis and his four disciples, known as the Cindersis or 
the cinder for short, expand their group, gaining more power and control over the wastes. Delus leads their growing faction, and only those that have shown extreme devotion will have a chance at what is called the trial. The trial being potential amplification or death at the facility that is now known as the Telesterian. Now with that backstory told, I want to talk a little bit about how the faction will be portrayed in game. The Cinder is a divisive group among the inhabitants of the Wasteland. While they are not always overtly violent, they are extremely distrusted as almost entire settlements and populations will join them almost overnight. Those endowed with some psychic gifts wear clothing that lowers their senses in an attempt to heighten these gifts, like donning some of the gear that the nuclear test observers and researchers used, like this, for example. This equipment would lower perception, but increase intelligence for the player character. The lowest among the hierarchy will generally be similar to other wastelanders, using conventional weapons and clothing or tattoos that identify them as Cinder, but nothing really special. The next step on the hierarchy are the Cinder adherents, which are those that have shown higher devotion and are tougher opponents. Cinder reverents are the next class and are equipped with psychic weaponry. This weaponry consists of a mixture of telekinetic weaponry that blasts the target, kind of like how the Lorenzo artifact gun inflicts damage in Fallout 4, and can even blast objects into enemies, which can cause damage. The Cinder Devoted have weaker powers and are armed with psychic weapons and start to wear some of the sensory dampening clothing. Cinder Mistai are the three within the inner circle of the Cinder leadership, with strong powers that may also be armed with psychic weapons, and Delus, who at this time has changed his name to Samael as the Cinder Aeon. Auden, who if you remember was the individual who was the cell operator and nursed Delus or Samael and the other Mistai back to health, is allowed to serve in a unique role, which is the Keeper of the Telesterian. In this role, he is never required to attempt the trial, and so he has no psychic powers of his own. Auden is in a unique position to be influenced by the player character as he becomes increasingly disillusioned with the workings of the Cinder and their lust for expanding their control and powers. He is also armed with a unique weapon that mixes conventional weapons with psychic weapons that was made just for him. He, however, holds a very close place to Samael, or Delus, and is his right-hand man, which is unusual as he has not been amplified and is therefore outside of the inner circle. Samael has the most powerful psychic abilities of anyone within the Cinder, and this is in part due to his modified old Enclave power armor that amplifies his powers even further as well as giving him strong protection. He sees himself as the Enlightened One that was chosen to reshape the wasteland and therefore almost considers himself like a god. This is why the faction has grown to essentially be a religious cult-like group. The Chosen Three, or the Mistai, are the next most powerful behind Samael. Two of them are from the original group, but one of them died in a recent conflict. He was to be replaced by a particular chosen person, but he ended up dying during his amplification at the Telesterian. The next choice was a zealous follower named Lemuel, who did survive amplification. Each of the Mistai have differing powers and each has a symbol associated with them. Combined, all these symbols create the main symbol for Cinder, which is born in full only by Samael. This was the symbol used at the Telesterian on the floor to demarcate where the subject should be relative to the machine in order to be amplified. Those that remain outside of the group are hostile toward the group or have shown an innate ability to resist the psychic attacks by the group are labeled Hylic, which is a derogative term amongst the Cinder akin to infidel. When Samael and his Mistai are engaged in major fighting either with you, the player, or another faction, it is revealed that they all have old Enclave power armor that has been modified to amplify their psychic attacks while offering the protection benefits of power armor. Samael's power armor is the most advanced and distinct looking. Killing him will let you have this power armor, which has unique look and characteristics. While siding with the Cinder can reward you with gear of one of the main characters who ends up dying. It is found out as well that the Cinder is actively working to cause unrest among the enemy factions, and they have been particularly effective with one faction called the Compact. Their infiltration 
into the compact has been the primary cause for the breakdown of unity within that faction. The area that the Cinder control used to be controlled by the compact. However, a massive super mutant invasion caused them to lose control and for raiders to occupy much of the area. This allowed for Cinder to grow in size and control a decent amount of area because of the severe weakening caused by the super mutant invasion. Cinder are searching for a documented but lost weather manipulation facility in the area because they believe that they can recalibrate the massive antenna system to release RF signals at frequencies that increase suggestibility of the populace at large and boost their own psychic abilities. The facility is described as a massive facility with acres of antenna. Their search for this facility is the main objective in the first act of the game and its location will lead to conflict with another main faction. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the main theme and how this faction fits into that theme. The main theme overall explored throughout the game is the concept of choice and free will. It contrasts with the themes of fate and predestination. Opposing factions champion free will and their ability to choose and exercise those freedoms. While the Cinder shun the idea of fate as being too simplistic, they also maintain that free will is an illusion. They would be labeled as determinists, which means that there is an end result or series of events due to causality. Understanding this and embracing the path as they see it is one step towards the secret knowledge they claim to be trying to obtain. As the player character, if you choose to ally yourself with the Cinder, you will eventually get high enough that you will be considered for amplification, but a critical mission helps decide your place within Cinder. Auden can be talked to and convinced to betray Samael, at which time the player character can kill Samael and his three Mestai. Choosing to not turn Auden against Samael will result in a mission where Auden is killed and you are offered the position of esteem at the hand of Samael but not needing to undergo amplification. If Samael and the Mistai are killed, the player character has the possibility to lead the Cinder without undergoing ampl amplification. It is also easily seen that the society under Cinder control is extremely orderly and functional. This is because all the proclivities of man to do evil things are taken away due to the psychic control and imprinting. They live in a society that is free of vices and suffering and creates a very homogenous and tight-knit community all at the cost of free will. This is the attractive part of Cinder and why they could be a viable faction to control the wasteland. So the science, which isn't really science, but you know, you have to have this fake science in there, behind the psychic abilities is an exploitation, enhancement, and weaponization of brainwaves. The psychic cell promotes the growth of areas of the brain that are underdeveloped, allowing them to project their thoughts will, among other things. This would be very similar to the psychers in Fallout that gained psychic powers from FEV. In exceptional cases, they can be used to bend space, otherwise known as telekinesis, and or time, so precognition. Not all people can have these powers, and not all people are affected the same by these powers. Some are at the complete mercy of those with strong powers. Others retain a certain amount of identity, but find it extremely hard to resist the psychic attacks or constant persuasions. Others still may only experience cloudy thinking and impaired judgment, while others are not affected at all. Non-human beings generally are immune or very resistant to their attacks, like ghouls, synths, or super mutants. The range at which people can be affected also varies. While anyone that undergoes a psychic attack must be within visual range of the attacker, the most susceptible can be imprinted sufficiently that the commands they receive never really go away. Those less susceptible will experience minor or no imprinting, decreasing the amount of time that they are affected after the attack stops. The player character proves to be quite resilient to the attacks. However, the intelligence stat of the player can change how much they are affected. Lower intelligence leads to harsher effects. The player character upon meeting Samael and speaking with him experiences their mind being taken over. The way it is perceived in game is that the player will go for at least a minute, or longer if they have a low intelligence stat, where they are able to interact with the world normally. Once the time is up, they snap right back to the point where they were told that they were going to have their mind invaded. It is then explained that everyone experiences it differently, 
but you realize everything that was said and done in the last minute never actually happened. Instead, Samael will tell you what you actually did and said for the last minute, and there's sufficient evidence around you that what he is telling you is true. So that's it for this video. I would really like to hear what you guys think. This is a very different video from my normal ones, and if it's something you liked, let me know, and maybe I will do more of them, perhaps fleshing out more of this idea of this game and these other factions. Also, there are a lot of references to real-world events, people, organizations, etc. hidden in the story and the faction that I've created. If you know of anything that I may have taken inspiration from, post a comment and we'll see if you're right.